Oh, hey guys, uh, it's Tony again, naturalist with Lake Metro Parks. Uh, I am at Pleasant Valley Park today in Willoughby Hills, and we're right in the heart of the Chagrin River watershed. You can see the Chagrin River right behind me. Uh, travels, the main branch of it travels 51 miles from Chardon up to Lake Erie. The watershed's about 267 square miles, so it's a lot smaller than the Grand River, uh, which I was at not too long ago. Despite the fact that it's much smaller, uh, it's actually seen a lot more development than the Grand River uh, because of its closer proximity to Cleveland. That is exactly why we are here at Pleasant Valley Park today. See, this is one of the newer parks in the, Net in the Lake Metro Park system. We acquired the land in 2007 along with the help of the Chagrin River Watershed Partners. Uh, prior to that, this area was a nursery, commercial nursery. And so I want to talk a little bit about what it takes to take land that's been in use by an industry for quite some time and sort of revert it back to its original purpose. Uh, it's a lot harder than you might think. You don't simply sit back and let nature take its course. You do that, you run the risk of a lot of invasive plants taking hold. That can create a monoculture, which really reduces the amount of food that's available. So you can't really support a great variety of wildlife. Now, even in uh, some of our more established parks, places that have, have been forests for quite a while, we still, uh, we still do a lot of monitoring, not only for invasives, but for uh, diseases and other things that might be detrimental to the ecosystem. So we're still always monitoring things. So it's a lot harder than you might think. And in a place like this, there's a lot more to undertake because there was a lot of man-made things that we had to sort of eliminate in order to help the area sort of be reclaimed by nature. One of those was an earthen levee that was along the banks of the Chagrin River. Now levees are great things. They uh, help keep our homes and our businesses from getting flooded. But when you're restoring a floodplain, an area that should be getting flooded periodically, well, a levee probably isn't the best thing. So the levees eliminated. There was also over nine miles of gravel paths, driveways, uh, that had to be taken out, as well as a drainage system that uh, the nursery had put in place. That all had to be removed. It's only after all of that stuff is removed that we can sort of help nature along the way, help it reclaim the area. You can see we now have this beautiful meadow behind me. Uh, we also have a forest habitat on the other side of the street, as well as a three and a half acre wetland. And it's a work in progress. Uh, it's not the greatest meadow yet it will be uh it's just it's going to take a little time so even now all these years later things are still kind of coming up uh still being reclaimed we have these beautiful trees over here we have a sycamore tree some cottonwood trees as well uh, these are trees that love floodplains that love a lot of water in fact um now that i think of it my good friend amber is going to be at liberty hollow not too far from now um, she's going to be talking about these types of plants and some of the other stuff that you can find in the flood, find in a floodplain. Um, so I'm going to let her uh, handle that part of it. Uh, until then, get out there, explore all the diverse metro parks that we have, and uh, I'll see you next time.